it's amazing. People at football games, little league football games, it's like football season transfers the whole dynamic of everywhere, you know. You know, football season, high school football, you know, it's it's crazy how much boy did that water dump some water in the pond. Wow, the pond is filled. Yeah, it was raining. Oh, it was I call it it was pouring down the buckets last night and it was thundering and lightning like crazy. I never experienced so much thunder and lightning in one storm. It's crazy. And, and I, my long long time being in, you know, Brainton, Florida, I never experienced storms like we had last night. Poor people at the high school football games. Whew. All right, but I'm not here to talk about football. But I am here to talk about something very, very, very important. Yes, very, very, very important. It's t the topic of this message called, talking about, I was talking about last night, about the reality of the wisdom of God. Of course, not the wisdom, wisdom of men, but the wisdom of God is supposed to help you see revelation. It's supposed to help you see revelation and revelation to be sure of that, of course, the song says, victory shall be ours, you know? I mean, that's what it's supposed to tell us, those that love God, those that, or what Jesus says in Matthew 24, those that endure to the end shall be saved, you know, as victory is ours. I mean, I, I do message about the, uh, Eagles who play for the Philly 4 13 Eagles, and that's Philippians 4 13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Eagles and Eagles, uh, Isaiah 40 and 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount on with wings as eagles. And, and waiting is in what we as Christians we're supposed to be waiting for victory, you know what I'm saying. We're supposed to wait for victory, and victory shall be ours, you know. We could see, like it said, that Jesus said, those that endure through the end shall be saved. See, we endure to wait for victory, you know what I'm saying? And those that, you know, keep on keeping on, keep, keep Jesus Christ in their heart, keep on keeping on. But the ideal, now watch something talk about the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is supposed to reveal the uh, truth of the, the truth. I mean, see, here's the thing what the opposite force is trying to do. It's trying to tell you a lie. Of course, the whole idea of this, the dark world system we live in is trying to tell you, convince you that, you know, sin will give you life. Yeah, doing too much a ridiculous good job of it. You know what I'm saying? Sin will give you life. And the thing is, people just don't understand. I think, you know, uh, the deaths and the funerals that has been going on in the area is just in your local area. And hospitals, people are dying left and right. Should speak for itself. But I uh, can't speak for someone that does not have ears to hear or eyes to see or neither do they understand in their heart it's tough to get that uh, uh that, that, that idea to people you know hear that you know because of course they desire darkness desire to do in darkness because they have a bunch have lust in their heart to continue in this wicked path that you know leads to destruction but guess what uh Life, I mean, sin, sin won't give you life. Uh, the, sorry, the world, sorry that the world is lying to you. You know, they are. But anyway, but the thing is, with, but that is foolishness. Yes, that is the ideal of foolishness. You know, and it's easy, it's easy to believe foolishness. I did a message that says, what makes foolishness so dangerous that it's easy to do. Yes, and you know how people are so lean towards of doing the easy thing, you know, unfortunately. But in order 
to truly operate in the spirit, you got to be like my boy Tadashi and go hard. You know what I'm saying? You got to go hard for your Lord. You know what I'm saying? You got to go hard for, because he went hard for us, died on the cross for us. We go hard for him. Supposed to be the ideal, you know, situation if you're looking at it, you know, for what it is. But if you ain't, you playing religious games and thinking that you just can go to Sunday church and do this and do that and something's, you know, you're going to make an impact that, you know, great impact. You're fooling yourself. But, you know, if you go hard and have a relationship with your God, you will understand that you're supposed to you're supposed to go in not things are not supposed to be easy the only thing that's supposed to be easy about being a christian is when you put on the yoke of jesus christ i like that i like that his yoke is easy and his burden is light all right well let me um see and the thing is to understand the wisdom of god is the wisdom is the uh well, you have to have understanding. Yeah, it says, uh, with get wisdom with all thy getting, get understanding. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to get the understanding. And that understanding that Jesus is talking about in uh, Matthews 13 and 15 is understanding a heart. If, if Jesus says understanding a heart, it's not talking about uh, King Solomon's uh, Proverbs 3 and and it talks about lean out to, you, to that understanding. It's not talking about that. It's talking about divine understanding. When Jesus says uh, understanding your heart, he's talking about divine understanding because Jesus is God in the flesh. When Jesus says understanding your heart, he's talking about heaven's understanding. No, nope, he's not talking about earth understanding. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians think that he's talking about earth understanding and they will think that they can lean to the uh, develop this understanding on the earth that the earth is all about you know making carnal minded decisions without really you know analyzing what they're they're, they're making decisions that they're making which leads to death the carnal to be carnal minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and life of questioning that the answer really is right before your eyes. The answer will always be right there for people to see, you know? And, but for eyes to see, see, we go back to Matthew 13, is for eyes to see that we got the victory, you know, in Christ Jesus. And for for those to see what, what they're supposed to see. And the problem is, you know, uh, the lust of the flesh is all about seeing what you want to see. And that's the dangerous thing to do when you're thinking uh, according to the flesh. You see what you want to see. You want things to work out the way you want it and do whatever you want it to know it's going to go. Things are supposed to go God's way. See, y'all, like, look, look, it's football season, y'all. Look how many cars on the road. It's football season, y'all. Definitely. Just, you know, few cars on the road, you know. It's crazy. But uh, it's all about seeing what you supposed to see. You know, what you need to see is what uh, looking at things at the spirit is all about. And the thing is, the wisdom of God is supposed to help you see the revelation. And the revelation that I'm finna give y'all a hint. What, what, the, uh, what, August 21st. Interesting thing about August 21st, I was, God, you know, got me looking at Luke 21. Could, what, what, how do you put that together? August 21 and Luke 21. Now, now this might amaze some of y'all, uh, might not amaze you, but check this out, y'all. Uh, now, I was looking at Luke 21. Now, watch this pattern. Woo! And I was re looking at the pattern. It says, you know, Jesus said, I will send signs in the heavens. And and it was it was talking about that was in signs, and, you know, in the sun and the moon, uh, solar eclipse, and the stars. And it says that nations should stretch with perplexity. Now watch what's next. And in the sea will roar and waves will roar uh oh 
wait a minute, let's look at this in order. You know, it says sun and the moon, you know, I say solar eclipse on the 21st. Uh, speaking of Luke 21st, can that, could that be just crazy? Now watch this, and it talks about the, you know, nations should be like perplexity. And now it talks about the sea and waves roaring. Now, hmm, if I can use my imagination, could I dare to met, dare to put together an idea of a sea and waves roaring could be an idea of a hurricane? Uh, hmm, can I put a hurricane in that idea objective because you know there's a, a hurricane of course harvey hit texas and there's a hurricane of uh, burma i think i'm saying it right a uh, burma out there in the gulf hmm. can i say that jesus might have been talking about a hurricane you know and there's a lot of thunder you hear that thunder and lightning going on you know could i and because it's causing da damage i mean these roaring Hello, how y'all doing? All right, have a good day. And, you know, could I put that together as, you know, the pattern of the signs of Luke 21 is fulfilling itself? Hmm, maybe, maybe not. But it's for those of the spirit to interpret it. See, that's when the spirit comes in, you know, because I, I, can, I can think that, ah, that... That, that doesn't connect together. Seas and waves, you know, roaring, that's not what's connected together. You know, you know in the flesh, y'all could do that because you know how y'all don't want to believe that God is going to fulfill his divine purpose and you can continue in this nonsense of this world system and things are not going to change. But I believe God establishes the moon, sun and the moon to go the way they're supposed to go and that eclipse was there and just so happens that eclipse was started off off the 33rd uh country in the united i mean 33rd state uh oregon and it end up in the 33rd meridian hmm only a uh, heavenly father can orchestrate that because he's in control of everything you know and he says he sends signs in the heavens so can we see a pattern of something of fin to be fulfilled very soon and it has some more information to that that you know the son of man shall come it on the cloud it talked with something like they had something else and it look up to for your redemption draw or not but every you know i see everybody's you know talking about that's gonna be the coming of jesus christ well not quite it's gonna not what you may think it is it's not quite that idea of the coming of christ because here's what's important about the, what i'm finna tell you because you know jesus jesus put that out there now you go to uh i believe uh let me see uh romans and romans talks about i mean it's near the end of romans 16 and stuff I put it to I think 16 28 it talks about that we have to consider what the prophet says you know what I'm saying you're supposed to follow the prophets in the Bible you know what I'm saying the, the Israel prophets the, the uh, Isaiah Jeremiah Ezekiel and Daniel and Hosea and Joel and you got to follow those guys and the stuff that they put in the Bible Amos and you know, they have some prophecies that has to be fulfilled that you must consider of what's going to happen very soon concerning God's divine plan concerning Revelation. But really, you know, I believe, let me end it with this. I believe that uh, 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 Ephesians, Ephesians 1 and 18 will give the answer, you know. Uh, read it. It says, the eyes of the understanding be enlightened to know the wisdom and the revelation to you know uh know the uh, glory and the riches of the saints is a hint to what is going to happen very soon 
that I'll leave it to y'all. But that's the message, Helena, and I'll be getting to God be the glory of him forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen.